Hi all and welcome. This is Professor Trulove's Concepts for Nurses series and I am Professor Terry Trulove. And in this episode we will continue our discussion about transfusions. Sources for this episode include Iggy's Medical Surgical Nursing 9th Edition and Soul's Introduction to Critical Care Nursing 7th Edition. This episode will simply review the different types of transfusion reaction, and the first one we come to is the febrile acute transfusion reaction. It occurs most often in the patient with anti-WBC antibodies, which can develop after multiple transfusions, WBC transfusions, and platelet transfusions. It is manifested by chills, tachycardia, fever, hypotension, and tachypnea giving a leukocyte-reduced blood or single donor HLA matched platelets reduces the risk for this type of reaction. WBC filters may be used to trap WBCs and prevent their infusion into the patient, thereby reducing the incidence of a reaction. Then there is the hemolytic acute transfusion reaction caused by blood type or RH incompatibility. That is, the blood containing antigens differently from the patient's own antigens causes an antigen antibody complex to be formed. These complexes destroy the transfused cells and start inflammatory responses in the blood vessel walls and organs. The reaction may be mild with fever and chills or life threatening with disseminated intravascular coagulopathy and even circulatory collapse. Other hemolytic blood transfusion reactions include apprehension, headaches, chest pain, lower back pain, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypotension, hemoglobinuria, and a sense of impending doom. Another type of transfusion reaction are allergic acute transfusion reactions. These are most often seen in patients with other allergies. Symptoms include urticaria, itching, bronchospasm, and even anaphylaxis. The onset usually occurs during or up to 24 hours after the transfusion. The patients with an allergy history can be given leukocyte-reduced or washed RBCs in which the WBCs, plasma, and immunoglobulin A have been removed, which reduces the risk for an allergic reaction. A bacterial acute transfusion reaction occurs from the infusion of contaminated blood especially those contaminated with gram-negative organisms. Symptoms include tachycardia, hypotension, fever, chills, and even shock. The onset of bacterial transfusion reaction is very rapid and you should treat it as if treating septic shock. A transfusion-related acute lung injury, or T-R-A-L-I, TRALI, is a life-threatening event that occurs most often when donor blood contains antibodies against the recipient's neutrophil antigens, HLA, or both. Common symptoms are a rapid onset of dyspnea and hypoxia within six hours of the transfusion. Early recognition is key to survival. Most patients will require intubation and mechanical ventilation for respiratory support until the symptoms wane. TACO, or transfusion-associated circulatory overload, occurs when a blood product is infused too quickly, especially in an older adult. It is a pulmonary reaction that may be difficult at first to determine from trolley. This is the most common with whole blood transfusion or if the patient receives multiple packed PRBC transfusions. Symptoms of TACO include hypertension, a bounding pulse, distended jugular veins, dyspnea, restlessness, and confusion. You should manage and prevent this complication by monitoring intake and output, infusing blood products more slowly, and giving diuretics. Transfusion-associated graft-versus-host disease, or TA-GVHD, is a rare but life-threatening problem that occurs most often in an immunosuppressed patient. Its cause is similar to GVHD in that it occurs with an allogeneric stem cell transplantation in which donor T-cell leukocytes attack host tissues. Symptoms usually occur within one to two weeks and include thrombocytopenia, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, chronic hepatitis, weight loss, and recurrent infection. TV 
GVHD has an 80 to 90 percent mortality rate, but can be prevented by using irradiated blood products. The irradiation destroys most T cells and their cytokine products. Lastly is the acute pain transfusion reaction, or APTR. It's a rare event that it can occur during or shortly after transfusion of any blood product. Its cause is not known. Symptoms include severe chest pain, back pain, joint pain, hypertension, anxiety, and redness of the head and neck. It is not life-threatening, but does respond well with drugs for pain and rigors. The diagnosis can be supported with a positive direct antibody test, or DAT, indicating that some degree of hemolysis has occurred, but that hemolysis is not widespread. APTR management focuses on patient support and drugs to control or reduce the symptoms. Interventions for transfusion reactions include stopping the transfusion and removing the blood tubing. For hemolytic and suspected bacterial reactions, return the component bag, labels, and all the tubing to the blood bank or laboratory. Notify the rapid response team. If the patient has no other IV access, keep the access in flush with normal saline. If they do, DC that IV. Do not flush the contents of the blood transfusion tubing, which would allow more of the reaction causing blood to enter the bloodstream. Instead, withdraw blood from the catheter. Administer oxygen and or diphenhydramine as needed. Treat for shock if indicated. Other drug therapy is supportive, such as antipyretics for fever, antibiotics for suspected bacterial contamination, and mayparidine for rigors. That does conclude this episode, but don't worry, there are more episodes on hand. In the meantime, I hope you learned a little bit today. I hope you come back to listen some more, and if you do, we'll see you then. Take care now.